I'm attempting a repair here on this snake catcher snake grabber tool. This thing's been a really good snake grabber. It gets a lot of use here. Uh, in Colorado, we got a lot of bull snakes. And we don't like to kill them. We just like to move them. But this has gotten a little sticky. It doesn't always release now. The pole is bent. And so I want to get in here and have a look at the cable and probably replace this pole too since it's bent. It being bent, it's not going to be able to tension it correctly. You can see here how real bent out of shape this, this pole got for whatever reason. So this project, since I'm going to be removing the ends and removing the pole and the cable, you could use all the steps in this project to lengthen or shorten your snake grabber. So what I'm just doing here is drilling out these rivets. There are three rivets on each end. You can see I've got one started there. I just got a drill bit that's a little bit larger than the center part here. And I'm just going to drill this out, same way as you drill out any other. Oh, now that one looks, that looks like aluminum there. That came out, that came apart pretty quickly. Let's see if I can pull this out. With those rivets drilled out, I can turn this now, and then I checked on both sides. I'll show you where the cable loops here. You can see that's where it's looped, and that is the pivot. And that's a much bigger pin there than the one on the other side. I'll show you here on the other side. The pins are smaller. That one there. And then the, what the cable is looped in under there. So I'm going to work on this side. Just going to use my rotary tool here to grind that down ever so slightly so I could tap that pin out. With that pin out, I can pull it down. I got another pin here, and that's where the cable loop is. So I'm gonna knock this, I'm gonna do the same thing on this pin. I'll take that spring out of my way. That one, you don't have to grind down. It doesn't look like. There's our pin there, I just tapped it out, and there's our cable loop. You might be able to see it there. All right, so now we can pull this off and we can pull the other side off too. So we've got this all apart here now and this comes apart just like that. So I think what I've decided to do here is I went over to Lowe's and I did, rep I did find a good fit for this. This is half inch conduit, which is actually 5 8 inch inside diameter. And that'll fit on there real well. Might have to tap it a bit, but it will fit. And this is um, this is a bit more rigid, thicker walls than the original pole. So I will replace that. But while I was out, I also went by Napa, and I picked up a cable stop here, um, like you'd use for throttle cable. Or on, and I I was because I was looking at this, and I thought it would be really nice to be able to adjust this. And there may be just enough space that I could put a cable stop back there, change this from a loop to straight through and then have a loop coming out the back here so I, in the, I could pull it back, adjust the tension, and then release it. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a shot. That means I need to disassemble this. So I'm going to go ahead and grind down just as before. I'm going to grind down whichever side of this pin is the, maybe this one. Grind that down, get the edge off that pin. Probably gonna shake the camera pretty well since this camera is also attached to the mesh. I got a punch that'll fit in there real nicely now. And there's that pin. So let's get this apart here now. All right. So what I'm thinking is that. I can change this from having a pin here to being a pass-through. So I'll go in with a drill bit. I'll leave the pin in there. And I'll 
just drill a hole through that'll accommodate that 1 16th inch wire rope. I'll have it come out the back and then I'll drill a hole back here where that wire can also go. I'll install a cable stop and a loop here so that I can adjust it. All right. Now this is what was going on. It was allowing me to, or I had to pull it back too far to get a good grip on the snake and then it wouldn't let me release the snake because this was catching here. All right, and there may have been some other issues. So I can see where this is cast aluminum. That's real rough there. So I'm gonna clean that up, clean it up here where it was also contacting, but I don't wanna to have to pull it all the way back like that. I wanna be more like so, which, which means for my plan with this cable stop, what I'm thinking is, if you can imagine the cable running inside there, that's where our fold was. So it would have been about right there where the pin is or was then this would have folded back. I want to put this cable stop there, meaning in there, so I could just put a screwdriver in there and then the cable will run through the cable stop. I'll drill a hole in the back here and loop this around so I can pull it to, to adjust the tension on it. That's, that's what I would like to do. So I'm going to need to drill a hole in this through this groove so I know the cable fits in there because that's where it was. So I'll just use about that same, I'll use about that same diameter drill bit and then I'll have to come up with a spot over on this side just to get through. Again, this is just aluminum. It'll be real easy to drill. But I did notice with this apart that the cable, you can see right there maybe where the cable was riding and it took a little, took a little bite out of that aluminum there. That's obviously not good for the cable. That'll wear it out some. So if I have a, I'll check and see if I've got some kind of plastic bushing that'll fit in there. If not, I'll just try to get the cable so it's tending to be more towards the middle of this cylinder here. So here's what I've got here, just kind of mocked up. Uh, this cleaned up well, this is just aluminum. So square file, made real short work of that. Cleaned it up on both sides and I cleaned up here a little bit, anywhere where it appeared to have been rubbing. And so that's my goal there. I want to be able to adjust this so I'll make a little loop back here. And then as far as the pull, hopefully that's enough pull because that's as far as that's going to be able to go back with that stopper in place. And then I also open this up a little bit to get rid of that, that little part where the cable had rubbed. And then I went through my, oh, let me save this for later. This looks useful, door. And I found this. I don't know what I pulled this off of um, or what it was originally from, but I found two of them. And originally that it was flat on one side, so I just used a big drill bit to bevel out both sides. One side was already done. And then I'm gonna stick that in there so that this rides a little bit better. I'm just going to use a little wire clamp to make a loop here and that'll be the last step. I went to Home Depot and I got these for a couple bucks. 1 16th inch and I'll use those and I decided <clears throat> to just pick up some new wire. It was only 34 cents a foot so I got five foot of wire. I can put this back together because I'm not going to make any changes here. I thought about maybe using my other cable stop where did that go I thought about using my other cable sp stop but when I was messing around with this it doesn't seem like there's enough quite enough room so I'm going to stick with with how this was before with just the wire loop around there I'll go ahead and make this loop for this end and I'm just going to use about the same size as the original we don't want this we don't, you don't want to go too far up because you don't want anything having to travel through there with that on it so I'll just bring it back about how it was before. So you can see where I've got that slipped on just so it's about the same length. And I'll slip this in here. Hopefully I can get it in there and I'll have to clean up that cut. All right, that looks pretty good. And then this is just aluminum, so I'm just gonna use my crimping tool here. That should do just fine on this. Oh yeah. Another one. 
and one more. All right, that looks good. Now putting this back together, this little part here was where that spring went, and this is the hole for that hinge point right there, that pivot point there. And this mean that means this is where our wire was looped around. I'm gonna use the stem here on this rivet. This is an aluminum 5/30 seconds rivet. I got a whole bunch of these, so I don't mind using it for this purpose. So I will cut this down, we'll loop the wire through here first. So I don't forget that. And I because I, I tried to reuse the pin, but the pin I had it just a little too short over there. Oh, here comes a jet. I think the jets are gone. We'll see. So I'm just going to take this, I'll cut it off here just so I have plenty of slack. And then I will go ahead and just deform one end of this. It's like I say, it's, it's just aluminum. So. so I've got one end deformed. If your technique for deforming one end deforms both ends, just use the clippers to cut off the spot so you can put it back in. Let me make sure that I got, yeah, that's the one there. So I'll go ahead and slip this in real quick. And that'll work there. Then I'm gonna use these to cut this. And then I'll just go over to the vise and squeeze it, or you can smack it with the hammer. Whatever's easier for you. All right, there we go. So that worked real well. I just cut it. I had to use a, another set of pliers that cut a little bit closer than the Lyman pliers, but I got it cut close. And then I just put it in the vise and compressed it. You could just put it on something hard and smack it with a hammer. And then if you have a little bit too much there, this is all aluminum, so um, if you're using a piece of aluminum like that, or even whatever you're using, use a file, file it down. Here's the old pole, which is real bent out of shape, especially down here, as you can see. This old pole is fairly thin walled, and it's aluminum, which makes it lightweight, but also makes it less durable. So the new pole is just regular half inch EMT conduit from the heart from Home Depot, Lowe's hardware store, wherever. This was like four dollars and something cents for a five foot piece. I don't need five foot, need less than that, so that's a good deal. It's thicker wall and it is steel. So I believe that this is a tight enough fit on this that you wouldn't even need rivets. Because this it's you know it's loose. So you need something to keep it on. But this I believe if you don't want to do rivets, you could just tap this in. If you need to, you can shave a little off of this so it's a, a good fit. But I, I don't think you actually would need rivets on there. I'm going to go ahead and try to put some rivets on. Um, I'll at least have the holes there in the pole. It's clear to me that they drilled through both of these pieces on install. So if you're using a, if you're using your pole as a template and you want to go per side, then um, use the side that fits ahead. But what I'm going to do to use this as a template is I'm just going to wrap this piece of tape around here and then punch the hole through, punch the holes through, and then transfer the tape to the other to the other pole. And that'll, that'll it won't be perfect, but it'll be close enough. Looks like there's one hole. And I'm looking on the inside to try to find it. Where's the other hole is around here? And then the other hole is around there. Alright. So I've got some holes in this. I can take this off. Slip this on here and just drill some drill some holes there. Okay, I'm not gonna bring the camera over to the vise, but I'm just gonna put this in the vise and drill those holes. This here is the riveter I'm gonna use. I really like this riveter. This was only about listed 20 bucks at Harbor Freight, so with the coupons you can get it for even cheaper than that. Um, the reason it's so big is because you can use it for stainless, which is what I usually use it for. I usually use it for stainless steel rivets and it does really well. So the way it works here is on the side, you've got a little storage space for these bits you can see that hole is bigger than that hole and there and there and so on and that you just unscrew this put the 
correct uh, size bit on here for whatever size rivet you're using and then you open the handle and close it. You'll see how to use it in the video but just wanted to mention that this is the tool I'll be using for the rivets. I don't think you need a riveter um, if you're just going to replace the pole with conduit because like like I said it looks like at least on mine that, there, that it's enough of an interference fit that you could tap it on and probably be fine. But I'll use the riveter. We'll see how these line up. I did actually file this down just doesn't take long on aluminum. I just filed it down a little bit um, because I thought, well, it would be nice to be able to do it by hand since I'm going to do rivets. So we'll see how these holes align. There we go. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. That one looks good. We'll see if I can get the rivet in. I'm using a 1 8 inch rivet. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. So. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and rivet this now so I have this end fixed so before I drill the holes in the other end I'll be able to have it in alignment. These are the aluminum rivets that came with the Harbor Freight riveting tool. I've got my 1 8 inch bit on there and this shouldn't take too much effort at all being real small and aluminum. So all you do is give this a couple pumps. Oh, in this case just one pump. was not expecting that. Maybe I can do another one in a little bit more civilized fashion. We'll see. Get on here and hopefully don't knock the camera over again. This riveting tool is nice and I originally got this riveting tool to do uh, window regulators. There we go. That's a bit more civilized for you. But there's actually a lot of uses for these rivets. Um, not just on, you know, home projects, but like uh, repairs, a lot of repairs. There we go. Okay, so that's riveted back together. The reason I wanted to rivet that end in before I drill this end is because I want this to be in alignment, right? So that's the bottom part of the tongs. The red one is going to be the one on the top, it goes like this. So before I drill these holes, I don't want to drill the holes and then it ends up being like, if I can get this back out, like that or like that. I want it to be lined up. So. I'll give you a view from the camera, see what I mean? About like, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but whatever, about like that. So what I did is I made a mark there to align with that hole. So now when I make my new template and I transfer it here, and you do have to make a new template because each end is different, um, I'll line up that hole with that so that I can have it in this orientation and not be sideways. I'll check the fit on this, but I'm not going to install these rivets just yet because I want to be able to run the cable through. But that looks good there, there, and there. So we're set. I'm going to put this end together now since I won't have to work over here anymore. So I'll just push this through. All right. And I'm going to use a 3 16th inch rivet, again, just the stem part. This is another one of the aluminum ones that came with that kit. So I'll just cut it so I have the full length to work with. And as before, I'll deform one end, push it through, and then put it in the vise. So I got it through there. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So see that? So if I just take off a little bit, I'll be able to just put this in the vise and do both ends at once. See what I mean there? So that worked well. You can also just stick it on something hard and elevate this so you don't accidentally twist it. Stick it on something hard like that and bang that with a hammer. I went ahead and just tapped that little black thing that I showed earlier that I found in my odd parts drawer and when I drilled this to open it up a little bit I didn't drill all the way down so it does taper some and so that's in there real snug I went in with the pick try to move it I can't move it any I had to tap it in with a punch so I'm fairly confident that that won't move if it does then I'll be back in here taking this apart but I thought I'd give it a shot so now we can go on to this side Get this threaded through here. Okay. 
And then we got the handle almost almost done. There's my new hole there on the handle. Oops, handle goes this way. Okay. And then my stopper's going to be on here. And then I'm going through the hole in the back. And I'm just going to pull this together loosely. This, that's for the stopper, that screw needs to face down so I can make the adjustments. I'll go ahead and just push this together. Looks like it's got to be like... This is how I am this is how I want it to be so this is the part that is the big modification the adjustment there I'm gonna slip this spring on after all that right now that goes on around that little pin there. there and then just stretches over this here all right I'm just gonna put this nail in here uh, so I can just kind of do a little fiddling around with it. I've got the cable, I think about where I need it, but maybe not quite. So with that through there, I'm able to pull back to there, which does indeed close this end. All right, I might be able to close it just a tad bit more, because you know, sometimes you want it to close a little bit more, so I might have to tighten up that, tighten that cable up there. But I'm close enough that I'm going to go ahead and put my pin back in there. I can't reuse the pin because I kind of messed it up. This would be a good pin to reuse. Um, but this, all these pins were aluminum. It's pretty much this whole thing except the cable is, is aluminum or was aluminum. So I will use another aluminum rivet that will fit through that hole. I drilled this hole just a tiny bit more so I could accommodate this aluminum rivet stem there, that's what I'll cut off again, as I have been doing for the others. And I've got it tensioned close to where I need it to be, or would like it to be. And I do like how it's performing. So I'm going to go ahead and install this pin and then install one of these rivets and then make my final tension adjustments here. Looks like this is going to be pretty close to just the right length. And I got just a little bit hanging out on each side. Don't hit a hammer with a hammer, but this is aluminum here, so we, we're okay doing this. You can set it up like that, or you can put just concrete, whatever you got under there. A few wax in it all. To form that aluminum pretty quickly. And as long as it won't come out of the hole, you're good. And that'll work. I'll file that down a tad bit. I'm going to put one rivet in just in case i got to make adjustments. I don't want to run out of rivets. Now finally here for tensioning this, you can see I've got, I've got plenty of the travel down here is good to close this almost all the way. Um, when I'm using it on a snake, I don't need it to close all the way because there'll be a snake in there. But I would like it to close maybe like that's a that seems to be about as much as it will close because of the rubber coating. So I'm going to make an adjustment here on my cable so I can tighten it up a little. And to do that, I'm going to pull back. Let's see. I'll pull back on this, go in with my screwdriver. Hopefully that's a better look in there. All right. So I'll turn the screwdriver. I mean, turn the uh, screw to loosen that cable stop. Just get in here and push this back with the another screwdriver. And I'm still holding this, pulling it that way. Just trying to tighten it up as much as I can here. And then I'll, I will tighten this. Now I'll check it. 
Okay, it's closing without me even going all the way back there. So that's what it looks like over here. Okay, and that's what it looks like on the handle. So this is a pretty big improvement. This is a 10 pound weight, so I'm gonna pick it up and see how we do. Okay, looks good. You can see my grip here. All right, I'll show you the travel on it, or will I? There it is there. I'm very happy with that closure. Here's what the travel looks like on the handle. I'm happy with that. Oh no, a blue-headed orange snake has snuck into the shop. Quick, get him out. So I could have drilled this hole in a different spot here. I considered that when I was first mocking it up. The problem was that then I'd be going out here. So this is fine because I'm not gonna need any cable length past here because it's gonna be kinked anyway from the cable stop. And this way when I loop it, it'll be up and out of the way like that. So the rivets are in, cable stop is gonna get fastened down real well. And I'm ready to do my loop here. So I will cut, I think I want about maybe, I just want something to put my hand in. So maybe about like that. I think I'll cut maybe here. These Lyman pliers seem to do reasonably well with this 1 16th inch wire rope. Wire rope can be real hard to cut. Slide that in there. And that's more than enough to get my finger around. I do want to make sure that that little bit is not sticking out because you can get your finger poked on the end of the wires. So make sure that's not sticking out. That looks good there. Looks like that'll be okay. Okay. Hey, you snake. You can't stay here. Come with me. This is the best behaved snake anybody's ever dealt with. Of course, it is a fake snake, but that shouldn't matter. The snake catchers work. So I'm real happy with this modification. Saves quite a bit of dough. All of these parts were less than $10. And it's a fun little afternoon project. So I hope this video was helpful for you with your snake grabber. And go get some snakes.